Good morning everybody. Welcome to morning prayer on the 26th of November, Thursday the 26th. Weather changing a bit, um, getting chillier, um, probably how November should be really. Um, this is the last morning prayer for a little bit, but do not fret. Every Tuesday and Thursday during Advent there will be a video posted um, done by different people. Um, so that be a reflection and, and thought for the day. And in between those, there will be written uh, short thoughts for the day, um, every day during Advent, um, apart from Sunday when we will be having our Sunday services. So uh, do look out for those on all the normal channels where you will find things on the website and on um, Facebook um, and YouTube, I guess. So, morning prayer for today, the last morning prayer then in the Kingdom season as we reach Advent on Sunday. If you want to follow readings today at home later on, the Psalms set for today are Psalm 125 and 126, both quite short Psalms. Um, oh, so you can have 127 and 128 as well as they are all fairly short psalms so if you wanted to read all of those in some peace and quiet that's the one set for today. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah and it is chapter 41 and verses 8 to 20. Isaiah 41 8 to 20 and our New Testament um, continuing the book of Revelation and today we are in chapter 16 and we're reading verses 12 to the end. Revelation 16, 12 to the end. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so uh, just before our Revelation reading, the Canticle for this season. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so then our New Testament reading from the book of Revelation 16, 12 to the end. The sixth angel poured his bowl of the great, on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up in order to prepare the way for the king from the east. And I saw three foul spirits like frogs coming from the mouth of the dragon and from the mouth of the beast and from the mouth of the false prophet. These are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. See, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and is clothed, not going about naked and exposed to shame. And they assembled them in the place that is in Hebrew called Armageddon. 
The seventh angel poured his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbles, peals of thunder, and a violent earthquake, such as not had not occurred since people were upon the earth. So violent was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. God remembered great Babylon and gave her the wine cup of the fury of his wrath, and every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found, and huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, dropped from heaven on people, until they cursed God for the plague of the hail, so fearful was that plague. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, well, my goodness. <laughs> Every week we say this. The book of Revelation is such an amazing book and so difficult to understand. And of course, theologians have poured over it for centuries, um, trying to make something what of it. And of course, we can take bits of Revelation and we can say, well, this, you know, the seven seals mean this and the seven lampstands are this and... Uh, and we can make some kind of sense in it. And um, we heard within that, if you picked it up, um, I'm coming like a thief in the night. Well, Jesus says that in one of his parables um, about being ready. You don't know the time that the Lord is coming, so be ready. He comes like a thief in the night. And there are other references that you, you can um, identify and reference back into um, other from, from other scriptures. But actually, that's not what this book is about. This book is, well, I don't know about you, but my husband um, enjoys a great disaster movie. You know, like, um, what are they called? I think there is one called Armageddon, um, Earthquake. Um, those ones when aliens come and um, we have to fight them off and there's always a hero, usually a man, an American man, and, um, and, a, and a little woman following on behind, you know. Um, but great big production movies about, basically about good and evil. And, and we love to watch them. And even our good old James Bond, it's exactly the same, isn't it? You know, he saves the world from um, this evil person who's about to nuke it or, or whatever, destroy the world in whatever way. And, and we love these movies. And this is how Revelation was written and how it, what it was for. It's, it's a story, an amazing story, um, and it has a meaning. Um, it's been taken uh, over by, um, there's a, the branch of an American evangelism, evangelicalism who um, see it very much as the rapture. In fact, there were, there were great uh, series of books written about it by... Um, What's his name? Tim LaHaye and Hal Lindsay, um, American writers, and they've made an absolute fortune writing these books as if it were real. I mean, they're, they're great stories, uh, they're, they're a book, but they're taking the story of Revelation literally. And just like these wonderful disaster movies we watch, they're not literal. They're disaster, good and evil stories that we love. And you can imagine the book of Revelation sat around a campfire in the dark, fires leaping and someone telling this amazing story. Children running off screaming because it's so scary but coming back because they want to know that in the end that the good overcomes the evil. And this is our book of Revelation. We can delve into it and pick bits out and try and understand it. But basically it's saying God will overcome. And we humans, we make an absolute mess of it. And things go wrong and there's going to be wars and there's going to be famines and there's going to be plagues, pandemics, all these things because man is fallible. But God is not. And God is the saviour of the world. And he sent his son to show us how to be and 
to have hope. So when you read the book of Revelation, I love it. I mean, it is. It's a huge storybook. It's exciting. But it's not literal. But it is literal in the way that it tells us the story of God's redemption of this world. So enjoy the rest of Revelation. It carries on. Um, do read it and um, perhaps read it late at night and round the fire with a cup of tea and enjoy it for what it is and remember that God's on our side and all will be well. Let's pray. So Father in heaven we give thanks that your son was raised from the humiliation of the cross to the glory of heaven. We offer our prayers through him who as our great high priest ever intercedes for us. We pray Lord for our world at this moment of pandemic where hardly a place has been untouched by this disease. We pray for all who are affected and particularly those who have lost their loved ones. We pray for governments as they try and control and we give thanks for those who are finding a vaccine to keep us safe and hope that we can go back to a normal life but not forget. Lord, we pray for all those places around the world where not only is there pandemic, but there is disaster or famine or where there is war and conflict. We pray that those suffering will know something of your peace and your hope that good always overcomes evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for your church around the world, for our Christian brothers and sisters, especially in places where there is persecution. Continuing our prayers for our brothers and sisters in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh, but also in Nigeria, in China, in all those places across the Middle East where Christians are losing their lives because they will not give up their faith in you. We pray for our own churches. We pray for a time post this pandemic that we can rebuild our churches in this place. That we can tell others about your love for them. Lord, we pray for all those are in our congregation who we know are not well at the moment or are suffering in any way. We lift them to you now, along with all of those we hold as family and friends in our hearts and minds. Lord, we would pray your healing on them that they would know that you sit beside them and walk with them in their journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we think especially of those who have lost loved ones in this pandemic, those who have loved, lost loved ones in the past week thinking of those whose funerals will be taking place in the coming week. And we thank you, Lord, for all of those whom we have loved but see no more, for the joy and happiness they brought into our lives, and for the joy and happiness we shall one day share again together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for this week. 
Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so, uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me for this last morning prayer and uh, please do enjoy all the Advent reflections that the team will be bringing to you over these next few weeks. I will see you on Sunday. Bless you. Bye.